Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now the main headlines. The Shia of the Ahl al-Bayt commemorate the heinous destruction of al-Baqi' during the month of Shawwal. A Christian delegation visits the holy shrine of Imam al-Hussein and sees unique architecture. Sydney church stabbing, bishop attacked during sermon. Over 250 human rights organizations demand immediate stop of arms transfer to Israel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers. This is Yunus Dawood and you're watching Shia Waves live from London, only on Imam Hussein TV3. The 4th to the 10th of Shawwal has been designated as a week of commemorating Al-Baqi'ah and condemning the destruction of the holy shrines of the Imams of Al-Baqi'ah alayhum assalam. Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Hussein al-Shirazi aimed the 8th of Shawwal World Baqi'ah Day a few years ago. More details in the following report. The 4th of Shawwal every year marks the beginning of the Baqi'ah commemoration week and the condemnation of the destruction of the holy shrine of the pure Imams of Baqiya, peace be upon them, by the extremist Wahhabi Sunnis, hence the grief of Shiites. The destruction of Baqiya refers to an event that happened after the siege of Medina in 1344 after Hijra, when the cemetery of Baqiya and its tombs were destroyed by the fatwa of the Muftis of Medina, backed by Sheikh Abdullah Bulahayad, the Saudi judge. The court of four Imams of Muslims, Imam al-Hassan, Imam al-Sajjad, Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon them, were destroyed in this attack. After the occupation of Mecca, the Wahhabis, led by Abdul Aziz ibn Saud, turned to Medina and after the siege and battle with the defenders of the city, they finally occupied the city of the Prophet of God and destroyed the graves of Baqir imams along with other graves, including the graves of Ibrahim, the son of the Holy Prophet, some wives of the Prophet, Umm al the mother of uh, the Honorable Abil Fadl al-Abbas, Abdullah, the father of the Prophet, Ismail, the son of Imam al-Sadiq, and many other graves. The destruction of Baqiyah provoked the reaction of many people and scholars in Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, the former Soviet Union, and other parts of the world. After the destruction, the Baqiyah cemetery turned into a flat land, but the graves of the four imams are marked with stones. The efforts of the Shiite scholars and also the government of Iran at the time to build a canopy over the graves of the Imams of Baqiyah and also to build a wall around the graves, despite the initial agreement of the government of Saudi Arabia, never came to fruition. Shiite scholars, in addition to protesting the destruction of Baqiyah, have written works criticizing the principles of Wahhabism and the destruction of holy places, including the book Kashf al Artiyab, written by Sayyid Muhsin Amin, and Da'wah al Huda, written by Muhammad Jabad Balaghi. It has been said that the Wahhabis were the first group to destroy religious places based on the religious views. The first destruction of the holy graves of the Baqi Imams by the Saudi Wahhabis took place in 1220 AH when the Ottoman Empire toppled the first Saudi government. After this historical Islamic event, with the investment of Shiite Muslims and the use of special assets and tools, the destroyed shrines were restored to the most beautiful shape. With the construction of the dome and the mosque, Baqiyah became one of the most beautiful pilgrimage shrines and, in fact, a pilgrimage tourist place for Muslims. Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi has also strongly condemned this heinous anti-Shiite and anti-cultural crime during his statements, the audio file and channel of the office of his eminence. The Supreme Marja has also emphasized the need to increase demands for the restoration of the shrine of Baqi Imams, peace be upon them. The painful impact of will not diminish unless this holy shrine is rebuilt and the traces of destruction are removed, he said. This is Ali Al-Hadi reporting for Shia Waves. Members of the Dickestry of Interreligious Dialogue affiliated with the Vatican expressed the happiness to have the honor of visiting the Holy Shrine of Imam al-Hussein in the Holy City of Karbala. 
Abbas al Muhanna, the official in charge of the reception unit at the Holy Shrine, stated that the Christian delegation was honored to visit the shrine of Imam al Hussein salam, and to explore the architectural, religious, and cultural landmarks of the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein. He noted that the Christian delegation expressed the happiness to have this opportunity to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein salam, and the Holy City of Karbala as well. It should be mentioned that the shrines of Imam al Hussein and his brother Abu al Fadl Abbas salam, have seen an increase in official and semi official visits by Christian religious figures and scholars. Another stabbing incident that has shocked the world takes place in Sydney. The prominent Sydney Bishop Mari Mari Amunal was viciously attacked during a Friday evening sermon at St. Mary's Cathedral. The assailant, described as a lone individual, reportedly approached the bishop while he was delivering his sermon and launched the attack. The bishop sustained serious injuries in the assault and was rushed to a nearby hospital for urgent medical attention. The man has been arrested while the, precious mo the precise motive behind this attack remains unclear. Let's take a look back at today's main headlines. The Shia of Ahl al-Bayt commemorate the heinous destruction of al baqiyah during the month of Shawwal. A Christian delegation visits the Holy Shrine of Imam al-Hussein salam and sees unique architecture. Sydney church stabbing bishop attacked during sermon. Also tonight, French-Canadian scientist wins Oscars of Science Prize for Cancer Treatment. In a powerful display of solidarity, more than 250 humanitarian and human rights organizations from around the world have joined forces to issue an urgent appeal calling on all nations to seize the transfer of arms, ammunition and parts to both Israel and Palestinian armed groups. The joint statement emphasized the critical need to prevent further violations of international humanitarian and human rights laws that may result from the use of these weapons. The deteriorating situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, particularly in Gaza, has sparked grave concerns among the signatory organizations. They assert that the ongoing bombardment of Israeli forces and the resulting siege have created an unprecedented humanitarian crisis, leaving the civilian population of Gaza in a state of extreme vulnerability. And now we'll continue with some shorter news. The All Parties Huryat Conference, the APHC, stated recently that lasting peace in the region is not possible until the Kashmir dispute is settled according to the aspirations of the Kashmiris. The organization has criticized the BJP part regime for misleading the world about the situation in Kashmir, expressing serious concern over the continued illegal detention of several individuals. The APHC also condemned the denial of Jumu'at al wuda and Eid prayers at the historic Jamia Mosque in Srinagar and lamented the miserable lives of Kashmiris due to repeated siege and search operations by the Modi regime. The UNESCO Regional Office for Egypt and Sudan has recently held its first local education group, the LEG event, gathering 20 international and national experts for a three-day workshop to reshape Sudan's education system in the midst of the current emergency. The workshop aimed to define and strengthen the priorities of the traditional education plan, ensuring its effective implementation despite the disruptions caused by the ongoing conflict. The workshop engaged stakeholders through a, stakeholders through a questionnaire identifying key priorities such as continuous, safe and inclusive and equitable access to education, enhancing teaching and learning quality supporting the education system. The mobilizing, re mobilizing resources and these initiatives that the priorities will guide UNESCO's actions in navigating the challenging conditions and striving towards a transformative impact on Sudan's education system. Heavy flooding from seasonal rains in Afghanistan has claimed the lives of at least 33 people and injured 27 others in three days. According to an official, flash floods hit this capital Kabul and several other provinces across the country, causing a partial or complete destruction of more than 600 houses and death around of 200 livestock. The flooding also damaged around 800 hectares of agricultural land and more than 85 kilometers of roads. The source mentioned that the weather department has warned that more rain is expected in the coming days in the most of Afghanistan in 34 provinces. The UK-based Who is Hussein Global Charity in cooperation with the Hussein Table has carried out a humanitarian campaign in downtown Houston, US. 
According to Huz Hussein, the two charitable organizations served more than 150 meals to homeless and needy individuals in the city. Inspired by Imam Hussein's values and principles, Who is Hussein Charity holds many campaigns on important global issues and carries out humanitarian activities in several countries around the world. Amnesty International has called on the Nigerian authorities to intensify their efforts to rescue, secure and safely release the return of 82 who were abducted by Boko Haram fighters in 2014 along with dozens of others released later. In a statement released on Sunday, Amnesty International revealed that since the Chebok abduction in 2014, there have been at least 17 cases of mass abductions involving over 1,700 children who were seized from their schools by gunmen, confirming that the children often endured serious abuses including rape. The International Humanitarian Organization also criticized the lack of effective measures by the Nigerian authorities to prevent attacks on schools and address the problem of child abductions in the African country. French-Canadian scientist Michael Sadelin was awarded an Oscars of Science Prize in Los Angeles on Saturday for his research into genetically modifying immune cells to fight cancer. Sadelin's scientific work has led to the development of a new form of therapy called CART that has shown exceptional efficiency against certain blood cancers. The genetic engineer was awarded the Breakthrough Prize, which was launched in 2010 and is dedicated to the world's most brilliant minds in fields including the sciences, fundamental physics and mathematics. Beyond recognizing the cancer, these Caramelican antigen receptors, or CART cells, as Sadalin named them, were also given genetic instructions to enter a killing mode and to multiply, growing an army inside the body to eliminate the enemy. We have reached the end of today's news show. Let's take a look back at today's main headlines. The Shia of the Ahlul Bayt commemorate the heinous destruction of Al Baqi' during Shawwal. Christian delegation visits the holy shrine of Imam Hussein and sees unique architecture. Sydney church stabbing bishop attacked during sermon. Over 250 human rights organizations demand immediate stop of arms transfer to Israel. And French Canadian scientist wins Oscars of Science Prize for Cancer Treatment. You can view the latest news on our website, or you can send news of your city or country to be published on our news agency. Contact us on numbers at the bottom of the screen. Thank you all for watching, and we pray to Allah the Almighty to haste the reappearance of the mass of our time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, we all have an inclination to the epitome of love. When we rejoice, when times are hard,